Welcome to the second hour of this morning. Here are today's headlines. Despite the commitment made in 2018 to build 20,028 gigahertz base stations for the so-called real 5G services by 2020, it turns out the three internet providers of Korea have not built a single one as of October. The companies have focused instead on building 3.5 gigahertz networks, establishing 160,000 base stations dedicated to 3.5 gigahertz, nearly four times more than the initial goal. The Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly and ruling party lawmaker Kim Sang-hee pointed out the internet service providers have not invested in 28 gigahertz networks, but still burdened their customers with high 5G fees and called on the Ministry of Science and ICT to lift such burdens by ordering a reduction of mobile network bills. The Personal Information Protection Commission will establish a system allowing Internet users to check whether or not their account information has been exposed to data breaches next year as part of a number of measures to prevent personal information breaches and ease public anxiety. At a virtual conference held yesterday, the Commission said they have confirmed that information of about over 20 million accounts on 1,000-plus websites in Korea were included in the illegal personal information database shared on offshore websites and are verifying those accounts. They will continue to detect and delete additions to the database and request investigation into frequent uploaders of breached personal information on the illicit database. The Korean court's notice served to Japan's Nippon Steel for court interrogation on the order to sell its shares to compensate four Korean forced labor victims during Japan's colonial occupation takes effect today. This means the court can proceed with the execution of the order to sell the company's shares of PNR, a joint venture between Nippon Steel and Korea's POSCO. Nippon Steel has refused to accept the 2018 Supreme Court ruling to compensate each victim 100 million won, and the court served a notice for seizure of its PNR shares in June. But it is expected to take a lot longer, for example, years until actual compensation, since court hearings must be held and order to sell the shares must be served if the company refuses to attend the hearings. Finally, Garrison Commander Michael Tremblay and 51st Fighter Wing Commander John Gonzalez have both apologized to Pyeongtaek Mayor Chang Jang-sik after the USFK faced criticism for hosting a dance party at Camp Humphreys when Level 2 social distancing guidelines were in place. Authorities revealed that the venue has been closed down and that necessary measures have been taken to prevent similar cases in the future. As of Monday, 408 USFK-affiliated individuals have tested positive for COVID-19. And you can listen to these headlines once again on our YouTube channel by searching TBS EFM. Once there, you'll also get a script of the headlines and subtitles as well. Coming up next, we're going to look at public housing plans and measures in Hong Kong and Australia.